ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> How are you? Have a seat. Thank you. Oh, yes. Doctor Who is here. Was that space fungus you've grown there on your face? I had to shave every day for, for nine months during the shoot, so... Uh... You've decided to give yeah. up shaving. Played havoc with my skin. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, Doctor Who, did you know when you were making it that it was going to be that scary? We were always conscious of, of how far to take it. The, the, the episode that I knew was going to be frightening was episodes 9 and 10 with the uh, child with the gas mask. Yeah. In some ways, that's more frightening than a monster because it could be them. They could be that kid with the gas mask on. Who was dead. Who was dead, Who was yeah. dead, as it turned out. Mm. What I realised filming is, is one of my jobs as the Doctor was if you throw a look at them, almost winking to the kids that you're not that scared, yeah. that helps. Not really. They're still 3 o'clock in the morning, I've still got them. Daddy, there's a monster <laughs> in my bedroom. It really is. Because um, you've obviously left the series now, yep. that's it, you're off, to go and do other things. <laughs> I mean, I am a Doctor. An eccentric? And it, I'm, well, mm. Alien? Alien, for sure, <laughs> definitely. The other thing, of course, I've got in common with you, apart from being a doctor, is we're both northerners, although you're from the wrong side of the Pennines. Well, you're not, you're not truly a northerner because you're from Yorkshire. You're, part, you're virtually part sheep, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it don't get rained on as much as no, you do. True. Let's be honest, let's be honest. I do have to say, though, that this northern route does show up, because most of the guests, they go, will you sell the, uh, send a Gulfstream jet for us and can I bring my makeup artist and will there be a Winnebago Winne Winne and all that? He rang it, he said, now, listen, where's the nearest railway station? <laughs> <laughs> he said, if, if you book the ticket now, you can get them cheaper. So, That's now, because I'm tight. I wouldn't give a door a bang. <laughs> Now, your car history, as you say, is fairly short, cos you, yeah. pass, you passed your driving test 12...? I passed my driving test in January 2004. So you've only been driving 14 months? About 14 months, yeah. Cos you did actually star in Gone in 60 Seconds, weren't you? You were the baddie. Yeah, I was the baddie in Gone in 60 Seconds, and they did a press pack interview on the set in Los Angeles, and uh, the guy said to me, what car do you drive? And I said, I don't drive. But when I told this guy that I didn't drive, he actually physically backed away from me, which is what, <laughs> which is what I've experienced all my life. What did you do before you were driving, then? I mean, how did you get about? Um, well, I lived in... The time when I would have been learning to drive, when my old fellow would have taught me to drive, the time when he taught me brothers, I was living in London as a student. All the work I was after was in London. I walked, ran everywhere. I'm a marathon... Ra I've run ma marathons. You're a marathon runner? Yeah. That's not sensible. I mean, if you've got to cover 26 miles, you are better off driving. Well, I'll challenge you. What? I'll challenge you. You... I run it, you drive it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we, I, you've given me an idea. If we stage a race, the Ma London Marathon course, OK? Which someone can run it, and then I'll race them in a car. Normal weekday morning. I reckon the car would... What do you reckon? Car or runner? I'd back the runner. You'd back the runner? Mm. What if I ran it? With the traffic. <laughs> I have once... I once ran 26 metres. God, it hurt. <laughs> anyway, listen, you've travelled across space and time, OK? You've fought Daleks, you've saved the universe, but now it's time for your biggest ever challenge. Mm. You've got to get the liana round our track. <laughs> However, there was one problem, because you said you wouldn't come on the show if you had to drive our normal liana. That's right. Because... Because I'm only... Qualified to drive an automatic. Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor no, I Who. I expect you all to back away like I've got <laughs> some <laughs> disease. I mean, I think what you said, oh, we'll give you a few lessons, and I thought, yeah, I can see that going out on national television. <laughs> yes. My lessons in a manual. <laughs> oh, terrible. I am not a natural driver in any way. Well, we're going to find that out in a minute. But before I just we do, I get that in early. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> do you know how many automatic Suzuki Lianas there are in Britain? 31 million vehicles on the road, 40 of them are Liana Automatic. So we had to find one of these cars in Britain and get it down so here. So have you had nobody else on this show who's driven an Automatic? No, nope, they've all driven the same so manual car. We had to borrow this from somebody. I don't know where we've got it from, but it's a borrowed car. It's mm -hmm. not ours. And who'd like to see how he treated it? I don't think they'll be too happy when they get Let's it Let's just have a look. Here is Christopher in a borrowed Liana. I, and... I've oh, not seen this. There he goes. <laughs> that was that was one. This is another one. Here he comes again. 
off back that way that time. And here he comes again. So if that's your car, tough. Um, anyway, who'd like to see the lap that yeah. followed that? You want to see this? I'd love to, yeah. All right, play the tape. Let's have a look. <laughs> I predicted that in the taxi now. Yes. <laughs> it's that TARDIS feel to it, and here we go. Were you a bit unnerved by the spins? I wasn't... I was never physically scared, I was just... I was obsessed with trying to master it. Well, this is looking good, I have to say. You're certainly concentrating there. Now, slow in here. Mm, I would say probably a bit too fast going into that one. This one, how was the hammerhead then? Good. Good. Go. I'm wondering if, if I think faster, I'll go faster. This, for someone who's only been driving 14 months, is quite impressive. This was... That's... This, oh, this, yeah, there you go. Off again. Oh. Is that Gambon Corner? No, this is Gambon Corner. That's you, but he hit the kerb on the inside, nearly rolled it over, and there you are, across the line. <laughs> you did actually cross the line in 1936. <laughs> <laughs> is the advantage of being a Time Lord. Um, did you think the Stig was like someone from Planet Zarg, then? He was, he's a great teacher. Is he a good teacher? That's, that's, I, I never panicked doing it. I just thought, he's tried so hard to teach me well, I thought, I've got to do this right for him. And promptly spun off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care. That was, I thought that was a very impressive lap. So where do you think you've come on this board? I reckon just above... Just above... Between Trini and Michael Gambon. Oh, my word. That's, where are they? There's Gamble 155. No, you did a lot better than that. Oh, did I? Yeah. You actually, bearing in mind, you're sort of... I beat Vinny! You've beaten Vinny. You did it in 152.4. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> you're in there. I'm so relieved. <laughs> I'm so relieved. That's the most pleased I've seen you look. It's, yeah. Do you see, it's the same everywhere, everyone that comes to this. Sort of, I'm not, not that bothered. And the time's coming. Everybody leans forward. Like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did no, I I've do? had a great day. I've really enjoyed doing it. But you, like I said, when, you, when you're actually doing it, you want to get it right. It's like you anything do. else. It's like playing the part or whatever. You go, right, I'm going to master this. And then suddenly it's all over. Well, you've mastered it more than Vinny. <laughs> oh, that's the important thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Eccleston. Yeah!